For the past 10,000 years, the only place you'd be able to see a dire wolf was through the screen on the hit show Game of Thrones. But Colossal Biosciences, a biotech company, has made headlines for saying it brought the species back from extinction. Scientists say they extracted DNA from fossils and then edited dire wolf-specific genes into gray wolves' DNA. Yesterday, I spoke with the company's chief science officer, Beth Shapiro, who broke down the science and motivations behind the project. Well, the motivation for this work really is because we desperately need new tools to be able to protect living species from becoming extinct. Um, habitats around the world are changing faster than species can evolve to keep up. And while we do need to continue to invest in traditional approaches to conservation and protecting habitat, we also need ways to help species get a leg up, maybe catch up with these changes. The de-extinction toolkit provides just that. We can resurrect key traits of species that can allow those species to fit right back into that ecosystem and help that ecosystem become more robust, more resilient in the future. But I will say dire wolves have been around for 10,000 years. Is this sort of an outlier situation? How do you know what treatment, what environment it needs to stay safe? The goal for these dire wolves is not to release them out into the wild. Um, we want to bring a lot of attention to how, how much help wolves, gray wolves in this case, need in the wild. But dire wolves are an ideal candidate for this first de-extinct species precisely because they are so similar to gray wolves, genetically and morphologically. And because we know so much about gray wolves, domestic dogs are a type of gray wolf, a domesticated gray wolf, we can leverage decades of scientific information to learn as much as we can from the science and also ensure real animal welfare health outcomes. Um, we know how to do surrogacy and gene editing. We can make informed decisions about what to change. And we know that this is going to be safe because these healthy pups that you see here are, of course, our priority. What are and some, then as we learn... What, what are some other successes that you've had and what else are you eyeing? What other species are you eyeing to become de-extinct? We've announced three other species, um, the mammoth, the thylacine, which is also known as the Tasmanian tiger, and the dodo. So we have species pretty much across the animal tree of life. And as we develop these tools, we will make these tools freely available to conservation as a way of protecting living species. Obviously, there are some people who might have a certain opinion about bringing species back. Uh, what do you say to people like that who, who may sort of be against this or or what do you tell them about where the line should be drawn? Extinction is forever. It's not possible to bring something back that is 100% identical in every way to a species that used to be alive. But we do need new tools at our disposal to be able to protect living species and living habitats. There are some habitats that are destabilized because of recent extinctions. And by bringing back proxies of these extinct species, functional de-extinction, if you will, we can help those habitats to stabilize with cascading benefits to the other species that live there. I got to be quick with you on this last one, but red wolves are endangered, not extinct. Your company says it was actually able to clone some. Can you walk us through that? This is an example of how we are trying to apply each of our de-extinction technologies to a real-world conservation project that directly impacts an endangered species. Red wolves are the only endemic American wolf. There is a red wolf conservation project that has had some success, mostly in the Carolinas, but there are currently not that many individuals that are alive in the wild. And the starting founder population was pretty small, just about 14 individuals. This means that they have a pretty restricted amount of genetic diversity to use when they're trying to create a population that's self-sustaining. We took a blood draw from individuals that lived in Louisiana, mm -hmm. and this is the same population that the original founding population came from, and we're able to clone individuals from cells in that blood draw. There are mm -hmm. four red wolves that have been born, mm -hmm. a girl and three boys, and they're all very healthy and happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. All right, Beth Shapiro, that's all the time we have today. Thank you so much.